Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. I hope everybody has had a good week and is looking forward to an even better weekend, staying healthy and staying strong. This is a members chat class. Sorry for the confusion for anyone at the beginning there. We just didn't have the uh, members chat only mode on. Uh, classes at this time are members chat only. It's one of the perks of being a member. And then they're followed by an all chat class as well. Uh, welcome, Carolina. Hi, Janiel. Hi, Abhishek. And in this class, we are uh, continuing our task two essay from yesterday that we started uh, focusing on getting those high scores. Uh, as usual, the class is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Definitely visit us there, join our premium package, and that's where you can really maximize your learning and your IELTS band scores. For general IELTS, check us out at G ieltshelp.com uh, where we have uh, materials that focus on the general IELTS exam uh, and again those will help you to maximize your scores improve your communication and be more confident not only on your IELTS exam but when you arrive to your country of destination as well so uh, definitely worth uh, visiting those websites uh, this is the academic here with the blue background, ahelp.com. Click that big red button to uh, join. If you have questions, you can even click the chat or the help button there. Um, and this is the general one here with the green background, and you can click that big red button there. Welcome, Sammy, Nick Hill, Rajveer, Ferdovs. Good to see many of our members in the class now. So if anybody ever has questions about how to join our YouTube channel, uh, questions about our websites, our applications, the IELTS exam, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Um, if you like uh, working out of hard copy uh, books, you can get our exam books from Amazon, A helps academic IELTS, G helps general IELTS. And um, we'll do listening uh, uh, part three and four with everyone after this class today. Uh, this is the question that we started with yesterday. So just a quick look at it. IELTS task two writing. Uh, you should spend about 40 minutes on this task. So the writing uh, section of the IELTS, two thirds of your mark. So about 66% of your writing mark comes from uh, the task two essay. Um, and it, this one specifically reads, people often believe information in the media, such as new bro news broadcasts and newspaper articles without question. What are the advantages and disadvantages of this? And give your own opinion. Write at least 250 words. All right. And then we talked about how to plan, and we did the planning together. Everybody did a great job. And uh, we finished our thesis statement, and then uh, I asked uh, our members, and of course anybody who was watching, to complete the uh, introductory paragraph on their own. Now the introduction has a hook, some background information, uh, and then of course the thesis. So hopefully some of you did that. Um, this is your chance, members, to share your hook. So. What kind of a hook statement did you come up with uh, for this essay question? Please put it into the chat now and I'll have a look before I share mine, okay? All right. Um, Ferdov says, nowadays mass media is controlling our minds. Ooh, that's provocative, Ferdov's. I like it. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words. Very nice. Uh, Carolina, what's the difference between an argumentative and an opinion essay? Carolina, essentially there is no difference. An opinion can be an argument. Um, what you want to think about, Carolina, is uh, the uh, types of writing, essay writing. So there are kind of four main types of essays called persuasive, descriptive, uh, expository and narrative. Okay. So if you, um, study specifically English literature in university, you want to become an English lit teacher or professor, um, then, uh, this is the information you would learn is, um, in biology, 
Carolina. And this is for everybody. It's kind of interesting. And then I'll get back to Target here. In biology, you have the big kingdoms, right? So anybody who studies biology knows this, or maybe from your high school. You have the kingdom of fungi, which are the mushrooms, the molds, the yeast, right? You have the kingdom of animalia, all of the animals, right? Different kinds of birds and mammals and so on. Then you have the kingdom of plantae. These are coming from Latin, of course. That's the kingdom of plants, right? Anybody know what the fourth kingdom is in biology? There's four kingdoms in biology, just like four kingdoms in essay writing. The fourth kingdom in biology is the... It's kind of a tricky one. I left the most difficult one for fourth. And then I'll get back to your hooks, I promise. Carolina says, space. No, no, this is in the living world of biology, Carolina. Yeah, so Abhishek says it's protista or the eukaryotes. Yeah, it's the single-celled uh, creatures, right? So like algae and um, uh, zooplankton and phytoplankton, those one-celled organisms, bacteria, uh, exactly. So... Uh, those are called eukaryotes, eukaryote, meaning one-celled, okay? So that's the kingdom is eukaryote, okay? So eukaryote, fungi, animalia, plantae. In essay writing, it's persuasive, narrative, expository, descriptive, okay? And Carolina, um, task two essay is always persuasive. Persuasive means you're pursuing you are persuading your reader to believe a position. It requires a specific type of writing. And under persuasive writing, Carolina, there are different styles of persuasive essays. So uh, one, for example, would be argument, counter-argument type, okay? And there are multiple, multiple types. Within that, there are different voices, okay? I don't want to get too far into that because you don't need to know that much information for the IELTS to get a high band score. That information you will need to know once you get into your higher level university classes, okay? Um, all right, so a little bit of first year biology and English literature for you. Okay, um, so again, for Dobbs, that was a good hook. Abhishek says, media plays an important and influential role in society. Abhishek, that's a fantastic hook, okay? Fantastic hook. It's true. It's a fact. It's interesting. I want to read your essay. Uh, Rajveer says, people deal with a lot of information broadcasted and published in media every day. Rajveer, fantastic. Again, you're, you guys are getting very good now with these hooks. They're clear, they're factual, they're direct. They make me want to read what you have to write next. Sammy says, media is, a ver media is very important in people's lives these days. Yeah, very good, Sammy. You don't need the word the. Okay, careful students not to overuse the word the. Hassan says, there are two sides indicate in all mass media news objectivity and subjectivity. Hassan Good attempt, little bit too complex. You don't need to get that fancy for the IELTS. Um, I think you're aiming more for a university level essay uh, in this case. I would say make sure that you're more accurate and keep it a little bit simpler to do that, okay? Uh, Victor says, nowadays many people can plan their day via mass media. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, opinionated for a hook, Victor, but I like it. Okay, I think it works. A little bit opinionated. You want to leave your opinions, Victor, more for the thesis. Oa says, uh, everyone involved in the media world receives a large amount of information each hour. Oh, it's too complex. So there are some awkward uh, mistakes there in the grammar. Also word use. Avoid the word huge members in your essays and in your speaking. It's colloquial. It's overused. Um, it's okay when you use it in your everyday speech with your friends, your family, uh, but keep it out of your professional and academic uh, communication. Everybody clear on that? So stay away from huge. There are a lot of other words like great, large, extensive, uh, just better phrased uh, than using the word huge. Okay, good. Yeah. So 
stay away. I, I see so many people just addicted to this word, huge, all around the world. It's just quite interesting phenomenon. Maybe it's the phonetics of it or something. Um, all right. Okay. Uh, Carolina says, nowadays individuals believe uh, everything they come across in the media. Yeah. Uh, careful, Carolina, with superlatives. Maybe not everything, but most everything. Okay. Almost everything. Uh, David says, the media has impacted millions of lives throughout the information it provides to individuals who want to be informed. Uh, David, good idea. Way too complex. So way too wordy. Too many words. Uh, simplify. Concise. David, concise, pull it together. So uh, media has impacted millions of lives uh, through uh, the information provided, period. Okay, keep it simple. All right, let's see your background information. So give me the background information. So now you got me hooked. I want to read your essay. Give me the background. Okay, Rashika, I think that's still the hook, right? Media is the main resource that people use to receive information on a daily basis. Rashika, it's good. Uh, keep the we and us out of your writing as much as possible, okay? Uh, our, we, us, it uses a slight second person author voice, meaning that it um, speaks directly to your reader. It includes me as well. Uh, maybe I'm one of those crazy people that just never looks at the media and I'm like, oh, I don't like this. You're telling me that I read the media? Okay, so keep your reader out of it. Sometimes we need to use we and us, but in most cases, we want to stay away from we, us, our. Okay, uh, Carolina says, information is available to the public through the internet, newspapers, and magazines. There's a plethora of articles that people can access without thinking about where this information came from. Yeah, very nice, Carolina. It's good background. Solid, clear grammar, good third-person voice in that. It's nice and direct. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Janiel, I didn't see your hook, believe it or not. I'll try to search for it. Okay, take a look here. Ah, there it is. I saw Amoeba. <laughs> okay, Janiel, so in the concurrent world, media is the most popular... Uh, source of information stream for the public. So Janiel almost, but collecting is very awkward and confusing. So you have to change the word collecting to source, Janiel. Okay. Careful with word choice, students. If you're not sure that the word is understandable, don't use it. Okay. Source is the correct word there. All right. Um, Rajveer's background reads... Individuals trust this information without checking its veracity as it is presented by experts and several other sources as factual truth. Yeah, very good, Rajveer. Excellent. So um, look at how clever Rajveer is here. Uh, Rajveer took um, the information from the background of why we believe the media uh, because it's presented by professionals, it's presented as factual truth, and gave that definition for the reader, right? So uh, based on the question, that's a very smart uh, background information. So people often believe information in the media. Why? Well, because it's presented by experts. It's uh, shown as the truth through video and audio, right? Uh, thank you for <laughs> blessing me for that previous sneeze. So very good, Rajveer. That is an excellent, that's a university level uh, background. Okay, that's what you need to do. Uh, Ferdov says, individuals watch TV in the evenings, listen to the radio while driving, and read newspapers in their leisure time. And this data uh, most times assists or even harms them on a daily basis. Uh, for Dobbs, I think the beginning is really good, your definition of how people get the news. I think the second half, it's a little bit overlapping with your thesis. So uh, maybe if you take what you did there in the first sentence and combine it with Rajveer's reason of why we believe the media, then you have an excellent background. Okay, that would be a master's level background. Sammy says, media gives us information about what is happening around the world. Uh, there are different uh, forms like entertainment, education, sports, and weather. 
Yeah? Okay, good. All right, uh, students, I, I will read others' uh, backgrounds and comments. I promise I can't read everyone's, otherwise we won't be able to get through the class, but that's okay. I'll, uh, I'll switch to other people's uh, responses for the next questions. Uh, I'll show you my uh, introductory paragraph, here it is, uh, that I kind of quickly put together yesterday with the thesis, and then we'll go on to writing the body paragraph. So this is my introduction uh, or introductory paragraph to the question. Uh, mass media influences billions of people's lives daily. Okay, so uh, keeping it quite simple. Why are we talking about media, right? I kind of combine my hook here a little bit with the importance. Um, but uh, notice it's quite simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words. So I really kept it that short. Um, mass media influences billions of people's lives daily. These kinds of factual statements really catch your reader because usually the reader will think, yeah, that's true. It's the whole world is being controlled by the media, including me, right? So that's kind of what I'm pushing here. Uh, and then uh, background, whether through television, the internet, or literature, citizens stay informed and up to date on the news and make decisions based on what they see, hear, and read. Okay? So television, see. Internet, maybe here. Some podcasts. Literature, read. Okay? We stay informed. We make decisions on what we see. So here I have my definition of what the media is as well as the importance of the media because we're making decisions based on what we see in the media, right? And then right away I have my thesis coming because as I mentioned to you last class, I have a fairly long thesis so I don't want to spend a lot of time on my uh, hook and background if it's not necessary. So the advantages of relying on mass media as the factual truth is that people can better plan to optimize their experiences. However, the negatives are that they can be manipulated into losing their time, money, and finances. I think that people should always apply critical thinking to news they hear in the media, especially when making important life decisions. Okay, so notice how it's not overly complicated. I'm not using any extremely fancy uh, vocabulary or grammar, but by any standard, this would be considered a high-level introductory paragraph. It's very accurate to the question. It gives a lot of clarity for the reader of what we're talking about, okay? So even if somebody does not know the question, they just read this introduction, they can in infer or guess what the question is. Okay, yeah, so it says it's a simple introduction. Yeah, it's simple, direct, and it works, okay? So simple is beautiful. I keep saying that, but it's not necessarily easy. It takes practice, okay? Simple is beautiful. All right, so body paragraph one. Uh, Ferdov says, uh, after word truth, maybe is, or instead of are. Uh, the advantages, no, uh, yeah, you're right, because the advantages uh, are, yeah, yeah, you're, you're probably right there for Dawes. Yeah, sure. Good catch. Um, yeah, Victor, you can, absolutely. There's no rule that your thesis statement has to be one sentence. A thesis statement, it's a statement, not a sentence. So a thesis statement, Victor, can be two or even three sentences. It's a very good question. And if you're not sure that your thesis statement, if it's long and complex, and you're not sure that it's clear, Victor, then it's a really good idea to um, break it into two, maybe even three simpler sentences, but make it absolutely clear for the reader, okay? All right, so let's get into body one. Um, body one obviously will deal with the advantages of um, uh, accepting uh, media as the truth, OK? 
Okay, so give me a deeper definition for this. Okay, so topic, sentence equals advantages of blindly relying on media info. Okay, so that would be my first one here. Uh, yeah, OS, you could do three body paragraphs in this case. So you could do advantages, disadvantages, and then your own opinion and just do shorter paragraphs, especially if your opinion is quite unique, okay? Um, or uh, you could tack your opinion to the second body paragraph, but uh, yeah, maybe do three here. It's not a bad suggestion, OS, absolutely. So Rajvir says, accurate media information helps... Um, guide people to make necessary arrangements in their daily lives and enhance their product uh, productivity. Okay, good. Yeah, sure. So um, accurate. I'm going to just take the nice kind of sentences that I see. Accurate with a, maybe a few fixes. Okay, so accurate uh, media information helps people, simplify it a little bit, Rajvir, to make uh, necessary um, arrangements, um, necessary, sure, arrangements, it works, uh, in their day-to-day, <clears throat> -day, just to kind of teach you something a little bit new here, day-to-day uh, -day lives, and enhance their productivity as well as, uh, well, I would say, and well-being. I didn't do as well as because of the well and well-being. Okay. All right. That's good. Uh, Ferdov says the benefits of trusting the media are maximizing strategies and gaining uh, valuable knowledge. For Dobbs, the correction there, okay? Uh, Carolina, these days people can find any kind of content in different media. Um, too general, Carolina, okay? That's, it's too broad. You're, it's like you're talking about a different topic, um, what information is contained in the media. I don't think we're really discussing uh, the idea that broadly. So try to be more specific here. We're dealing with the advantages of believing the media. Okay. Um, and the other point, Carolina, you have to be uh, careful with again is the superlative, any kind. I don't think I can find every information in the media, probably find lots, but maybe not every information. Okay. Uh, so careful with those two points, superlatives and don't be too general. Okay. Hassan says the main advantage of taking mass media as factual truth is that people can be more efficient with their tasks on a daily basis. Hassan, that's beautiful. I could have taken that just the same as I took Rajvir's. Uh, yours and Rajvir's, I'm sure you'll notice, are nearly perfect synonyms or paraphrases. So uh, that's how you know that you're on the right track. By the way, I've said this before, members, is when you look at what you've written and you compare it to a couple other students and you notice that, hey, I'm basically paraphrasing that other student, um, it's probably that you're on the right track, okay? Victor says, uh, media information aids individuals to make plans in their days and improve their productivity. Fantastic, Victor, yeah, very good. So Victor, Hassan, Rajvir, if you take a look at all three of yours, you're basically paraphrase, 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 right? Everybody sees that, hopefully, that same paraphrasing. So you're using your own style, but that's... Um, if I'm an IELTS examiner and I'm looking at your essays one after the next, I'd be like, wow, okay, that's a high band, high band, high band student, okay? Um, Abhishek says, nowadays people are relying on media broadcasts and newspapers uh, without question. Um, not only does it help the day-to-day -day strategy uh, for activities, but also enhances knowledge of individuals. Okay, Abhishek, good ideas. It's very complex, so you're making mistakes. Maybe try to simplify a bit and avoid the mistakes, okay? Your idea is good. The information is good. 
the writing is too complicated, you want to simplify the writing so that you avoid the mistakes. Okay. Sammy says the benefits of media in our lives are in various areas. Uh, most people start their day either with a, uh, with newspaper or TV news. Uh, Sammy, um, remember I said that before, keep the hour and us out of the writing as much as possible. Okay. Um, and it's a bit general. So the same concept here that I was saying to Carolina that it's, it's a bit too broad. Okay. You want to be more specific. You only have 300 words. You need to really hit it home. Okay. All right. Oh, it says media is, uh, is part of raising public awareness and knowledge, um, to optimize, um, daily business. I had to do quite a bit of adjusting there always to make sense. Okay. So reread, rewrite. Um, David says the benefits of the media consists in the accurate way people can take advantage of it because it facilitates several processes such as forecasting and optimization. All right, David, Ooh, uh, not, not a bad idea. Just be careful with the syntax and the word order. Okay. Um, so the benefits of believing the media is that, uh, people can, uh, forecast and optimize, um, future experiences, um, based on that information, something like that, David. Okay. It's a little bit, a little bit awkward. Okay. All right. Um, give me some explanation here. So explain to me how accurate information helps. So this is where your reader is going, okay, uh, how? Remember, it's like, your, um, it's like your reader's an alien, right? So you're telling an alien this information about media. Accurate media information helps people to make necessary arrangements in their day-to-day -day lives and enhance their productivity and well-being. Okay, how? How does it help me to do that? if I'm reading or seeing accurate information. Okay. Ferdob says people often consume products, uh, plan for their weekend and do physical activities, which means mass media gives them suggestions for this. Okay. So I think you have the first part there for Dobbs and it's a good start. Um, I'm guessing you're writing the second half of that now. Uh, Rajveer says people believe in dozens of news bulletins and journals about weather forecasts, rampant diseases and sports events, as well as act accordingly to ensure their good health and progressive lifestyles. Yeah, Rajveer, that works, right? So, um, news about, uh, activities happening around us, entertainment, concerts, uh, weather forecast, um, planning what to wear, uh, what not to wear. Uh, diseases, where to go, keep social distancing. Absolutely. So that's a good explanation of how it uh, helps to enhance our productivity and well-being. Okay. I'll wait for a few more here. Hassan says, individuals make approximately 50% uh, decisions per day. And most of their decisions rely on information that people consume from media. It is ready cooked and presented by experts in various fields. Um, yeah. Okay. Hassan, it's a little bit, I like your quantitative approach. Um, I like how you say an average of 50, uh, important decisions each day. Um, so I like the idea. Uh, I can go from that. I think it's a little bit vague. So I think you could be a little bit more direct. Okay. Uh, Victor says by watching weather forecasts, people can manage their events, read different useful articles to improve their health. Yeah, Victor, that works. Okay. So, so uh, Sammy says sometimes when I want to plan my day for going out to the station, I will watch the weather. Uh, so I know what to, uh, do during that day. Sammy, I think you're jumping to the example. Okay. Uh, explanation, then the example. What I can do here is I can take what, uh, Hassan and Victor wrote and combine those two 
and then come up with a really good explanation, okay? So, There. So I really did just kind of roll with what the two of you gave me. I wasn't thinking about this. I just took what you said there, Hassan, and what you wrote, Victor. Too bad we can't uh, do the IELTS in groups, right, <laughs> as teams. Um, <clears throat> and this is what I came up with for my explanations here. Individuals make an average of 50 important decisions daily, like what to wear, eat, or where to invest their money. And this is often guided by the weather forecast, food blog, or business journal. Okay. <clears throat> that they follow. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Looking good. So notice, uh, again, the quantitative information. It's a very specific explanation. So here, your goal is always to narrow the information, right? You're going from general, and it's a trickle down to more and more specific ideas, okay? All right. Uh, Preeti says, media not only serves the surrounding world, but also gives a daily update for weather for broadcasts, business investments, and political changes. Uh, thereby influencing people's behaviors and decisions. Yeah, very good, Preeti. I would finish the idea with what I said, um, thereby influencing behavior and decisions. I think you have the right idea, though I think it's a great explanation. Okay. All right. All this talking is making my throat a little bit itchy. Okay, uh, so, so far so good. Now, uh, we want to do the uh, explanation. Or sorry, example. Now, um, you can include an example that's personal, right? Because it's... Uh, yeah, for coughing, not so much. Bless you, Hassan, but thank you. Um, okay, so now the example can be first person because the introduction is slightly first person, right? So I think that people should always apply critical thinking to news they hear in the media, especially when making important life decisions. So obviously, it's a first person essay. We can use first person examples, and we can include one here, okay? All right. Rajveer says, last Saturday I heard news regarding heavy precipitation in Punjab, and today uh, that's what happened. Fortunately, I believed this information and carried an umbrella while going outside. It saved me from getting wet and catching a fever. Yeah, very good, Rajveer. Uh, I would, so, so remember, Rajveer, that in the IELTS you're limited by time and space. So I would probably keep it shorter in this case, Rajveer. So I would write something like, last Saturday I believed the weather forecast on the news uh, regarding heavy rains. So I took an umbrella and avoided catching a cold and getting wet. So simplify, make it more concise. Okay. Victor says, I always look at the weather forecast before I want to do my daily tasks because it helps me to organize different plans better and avoid problems. Exactly, Victor. Yeah, yeah. So, my day by looking at the weather forecast so I know what to wear and avoid catching a cold. Okay. 
Yeah. So, good. I usually start my day by looking at the weather forecast so I know what to wear and avoid catching a cold. And this seems accurate most of the time. Okay? So that works, right? Um, now, uh, notice how we're really just kind of piece by piece. So let's just read this all together, make sure it makes sense, uh, and we're not out to lunch here. Um, accurate media information helps people to make necessary arrangements in their day-to-day -day lives and enhance their productivity and well-being. Individuals make an average of 50 important decisions daily, like what to wear, eat, or where to invest their money. And this is often guided by the weather forecast, food blog, or business journal that they follow. I usually start my day by looking at the weather forecast so I know what to wear and avoid catching a cold. And this seems accurate most of the time. Okay. Uh, summary or conclusion here. This is clearly a benefit of believing in the news. Okay? Not overcomplicating it here, so I'm keeping it quite simple. All right? Uh, body two. Let's do this. So, body two is the negatives. Okay. And that's your topic sentence. So what's interesting here, members, if you're kind of, you've probably noticed this over the course of your studies is that when you have a good idea of the structure and the information contained in these types of persuasive essays, you can really just kind of piece them together like a puzzle, right? You don't need to uh, even write it all in one go. Of course, in the IELTS you do, you have 40 minutes, but um, you can just piece it together, okay? Because you know what each element needs to contain and it should flow, okay? All right, so Ferdov says the drawbacks of information from mass media is that it manipulates people in many aspects. Um, Ferdov, I think that's just a repeat of the thesis. We've already said that, right? Okay, so. We've used the word manipulate for Dov, so use a different word for that. I'm sure you can come up with a couple other words that will give your reader a little bit more information. One I'm thinking of starts with a T. Okay, Rajveer says, people can lose their hard-earned money and precious time while believing fake information circulating in media channels and articles. Yeah, okay, that's a little bit deeper definition, absolutely. So losing hard-earned money and precious time yeah. Okay. I think the word subjective might become very useful for this topic sentence. Uh, Carolina says there are different ways that people can verify and be sure about the veracity of what they're reading. Carolina, that will be your body paragraph three topic sentence. Okay. So here we're into body paragraph two, which is the negatives of believing in the media. Victor says the negative side in the media information is confusing uh, people by giving false data. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that could be good. So I think you have part of it there, Victor. I think you could add a little bit more to make it an even better topic sentence. Careful with the grammar, but you're partly there. Uh, Sammy says, news sometimes leads public in the wrong direction, providing fake information um, to get the attention of people. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, here's a good question. Uh, so when you're thinking about this topic sentence, uh, members, why? Why does the media give fake information? Think about that. Okay. 
So why does the media give fake information? Think about that and that might help you to add some more definition to your topic sentence. Okay. David says the deficits of believing information provided in the media without hesitation consists in the clear affectations in daily decisions due to manipulation. Carolina, that's right, but why are we manipulating people? So you're right, Carolina, but why manipulate people? Why manipulate people? Why do that? Okay, so... One of the major drawbacks of blindly following information in mass media is that people can be misled by false news which serves ulterior motives, thereby causing harm to the public or to the viewers, let's say. Should be. Oh, ulterior. Okay. With a U. There we go. Um, okay, so uh, here's my topic sentence. It's a little bit of a trickier one for sure, okay? But um, you could write this in a simpler way as well. Uh, so one of the major drawbacks of blindly following information in mass media is that people can be misled by false news, which serves ulterior motives, thereby causing harm to the viewers, okay? Um, does everybody know what ulterior motives means? U-L-T-E-R-I-O-R motives, ulterior motives? This is a collocation, and it's a very common collocation in uh, English, ulterior motives. What does that mean? What do you think? Just going to do a little setup here while you give me the answer to that. What does ulterior motives mean? Yeah, so Hassan says it's another reason or a false reason, an unknown reason, right? So the ulterior reason means a reason that is hidden from the truth, so hidden from the viewer, okay? So basically it could be something like I'm promoting uh, how good it is for you to eat um, a potato every day, uh, and the reason I'm telling you this is not really because it's good for you to eat a potato every day, but because there's a large potato uh, producing company uh, which has uh, sponsored uh, the news uh, channel with a million dollars to say this information, right? So it's a hidden fact from the viewer. And as we know, the media often has these kinds of interesting motives uh, that are unknown to the public, right? So uh, some kind of financial incentive, some kind of political incentive. So those are the different kinds of motives that can uh, push the subjectivity of the truth. Now, is everybody clear on ulterior motives? So the ulterior motive is the hidden truth. Yeah, so Sammy says hiding the truth or hiding the motive, yeah. It's hidden reasons, right? In the simplest way. 
So concealing, yeah, that's right, concealing the information. Okay, so one of the major drawbacks of blindly following information in mass media is that people can be misled by false news which serves ulterior motives, thereby causing harm to the viewers. Ulterior motives, um, by the way, uh, there is a word that we use, and I think it's the same in Spanish and in French as well. I believe it comes from Latin originally. Uh, that kind of is a paraphrase of this. Anybody know what the word is that I'm thinking of? It um, starts with a P-R. It's kind of a long word. I think it's about that many letters. Uh, anybody know what it is? It's one word. It's a very powerful word. And uh, this definitely applies in this uh, question and in this topic. What is it? It's not pressure, David. It's not pressure. And I think this word is very, very much similar in a lot of languages for a good reason, I'm sure. So even if you're not thinking English, and I bet most of you know this word, it's not private, it's not priority. Think about ulterior motives. Think about ulterior motives. Mm -mm. No one yet. I'll give you the third letter. It's with an O. Anybody get it now? Verdavs, I'm liking your background. Hilary says profundo. No, not provocative, not provoking. Next letter is a P. Now you'll get it. I bet as soon as I put that letter up there, a lot of you will be like, oh yeah, that's the word that Adrian's thinking of. Of course, that's the word. You'll get it from that fourth one. Ah, uh, Sammy, so close, but it's not. You're, the, the last, the suffix is wrong, but your, your first six letters are correct. There we go, Rajvir. It's propaganda. Yeah, propaganda. There we go. I, yeah, Hassan's got it now. Carolina's got it. Of course. Yes, there you are. It's propaganda. Mm-hmm. I bet a lot of you at home right now are doing this. Of course, that's the word he was thinking of, propaganda. The news, right? Fake news with ulterior motives. It's propaganda. Okay. And I, th <laughs> David says, my goodness. Um, yeah, and I, and I, I, th I think it's the same in many languages. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's the same word in many other languages as well or something similar. Um, okay, uh, students, so here we have our explanation uh, plus our example coming up. And then um, for our third body paragraphs, uh, it's going to be our opinion. Okay, and then the conclusion. So this, uh, members, I'm going to leave for you to do at home. It would just be way too much of a rush to finish this. I will finish this essay over the next couple days. So um, over the next uh, week, let's say, it will be up on the uh, YouTube uh, community post. So you'll be able to see the full essay there. If you have our uh, notification bell turned on, then you'll get a little bell for that, I'm sure, and then you can check out how I finish the rest of this essay and make a comparison, okay? Um, keep thinking critically <laughs> with the news, with essays, okay? Uh, go through the steps. Uh, keep these paragraphs short. So um, when, um, when we have three body paragraphs, this is a little bit different than what you're used to. So you're used to that kind of two body paragraph situation, but here we ended up with three body paragraphs. So we have an introduction, we have a body one, okay? Uh, we have a body two, 
and we have a body three. Remember, you're limited to about 300 words, right? So you can't get carried away with any of these body paragraphs. You have to really focus on being concise uh, to uh, write a good essay. So when you're doing this homework to finish body two, body three, and the conclusion, really focus on being concise. So keep your explanation to one sentence. Keep your example to one sentence. Keep your body paragraph three to just two, three sentences. Okay. All right. Um, Jainil, this one would be a little bit tricky to manage in two uh, body paragraphs. If I were to do it in two body paragraphs, um, I would probably include my opinion into the negative uh, uh, body paragraph explaining that for these reasons, it's important to think critically about the news, especially when. But if I'm going to do that, I might as well separate it out into a separate body paragraph. Okay, you could combine two and three, but eh, maybe better in separate paragraphs here. Okay, and then the conclusion. All right, uh, fantastic job. Really nice uh, work from everyone. Good contributions, and um, I love just bouncing uh, ideas uh, off of what you're writing into the chat. So that's fantastic. Uh, you're very welcome, Abhishek. Keep up the good work, everyone. You're all improving. I can absolutely see improvement day after day, week after week uh, in your communication, your language use, uh, in all parts. And that's uh, going to be for your benefit in all parts of life. So uh, keep it up. I'm extremely happy to see that. And hopefully I will see most of you in the next class for listening part three and part four. That's going to be coming up in about 30, 35 minutes. So I'll, I will be back uh, shortly here. Uh, for now, uh, I'm signing out. Check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general. That's for all of our viewers. Uh, and uh, I, again, I will be back uh, fairly shortly here. Bye for now.